We're talking today with Jack Lewandowski of Waterford, Michigan, and the interviewer is James Smither of the Grand Valley State University Veterans History Project. Okay, Jack, I'd like you to start with some background on yourself, and to begin with, where and when were you born? I was born in Wausau, Wisconsin, and uh, I went to school. I graduated from high school. Okay. What year were you born? Uh, 1926. Okay. And when did you finish high school? Uh, I was 17 when I finished. I went right in the service in V5 mm -hmm. uh, from high school. Okay. And was that 1943? Uh, or was it 40? Well, you would have just I turned... Think it, I think either 43 or 44. Well, if you had, ju had you just turned 17 or were you almost 18 when you... Uh, I just turned 17 when I went in. I okay. went down to Milwaukee and got my okay. physical and and uh, I took my mental test, passed okay. both of them. And a guy was in the V5. Okay. Now, to back up a little bit, um, you, be before Pearl Harbor happened, so back before that, when you were kind of a kid and in school, uh, were you paying any attention to what was happening in the world? Oh, yes. Okay. yes. So you, the I war in Europe and all yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when the Japs attacked us, I was ready to go to bat for us, you know. Mm -hmm. and I was too young then, but that's why I wanted to get in the V-5, because right. I figured uh, V-5 you know, landing on aircraft carriers and... Okay. and uh, now, most of the people in your audience know, don't know what V-5 was, so can you explain what that was? Oh, the V-5 was, um, uh, was uh, training for, uh, for flight, for uh, flying, you know, to, well, you'd, mm -hmm. uh, you'd have uh, any kind of plane you know, like it was a fighter plane or whatever, mm -hmm. but I wanted to, uh, that was my big ambition to get, and the V-5 is to get in, into that, okay. see, but it was Navy. Okay, so a lot of it would have been carrier aircraft or seaplanes or yeah. things like that. Yeah, seaplanes, yeah, we would be on, uh, definitely learn how to fly on that. I got a lot from it, you know, mm -hmm. just by studying it, because the uh, physical was, I heard that physical was tough, but mental was, but I learned a lot through flying. Later on, I'd done a lot of flying. Okay. And what I learned there, like vortices and all that stuff, all that will come important when I okay. started bush filing. All right, so you enlist in the middle of 1943, because that is when you turn 17. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then where do they send you for your first part of training? Uh, we went... Uh, well, we, we went to Milwaukee, mm -hmm. as far as I know. I, was it Fort McClellan? Or? McClellan's in Alabama. There's McCoy is no, in Wisconsin. No, that's where they sent me for the Army. Yeah, and, uh, right. Yeah. But yeah. for the V-5 program, how long were you in that? Before? Not very long. We just started training. Okay. We just got down and started training, and they shut her down. Okay. See, and and that's when they said you can go in the V-12. Well, the V-12 was just construction. And that, uh, I said, I ain't going to join the Army to, to build. I'm going to get in there to fight our enemies. Mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, headed in for the Japs pretty bad anyway, the way they assault, uh, made Pearl Harbor. And, and, uh, okay. So... The, did they tell you why they were shutting down the V-5 program? They'd say, I guess they seen which way the war was going. That's why they shut down the V-5. They figured they didn't, they didn't need, the, need that. But at the time, when they didn't know how the war was going, that's mm -hmm. why they started this V-5. Right. It was training uh, to get men. They needed pilots, mm -hmm. see. That was a big thing, and yeah. that was my interest, right. was flying. And pilots took a long time to train, and so That's they need to right. start a lot of guys, and then yeah. they find out, oh, we don't need them anymore because we keep That's shooting exa down Japanese exactly planes. That's exactly right, yeah. Okay, so they switched gears. So now when you... It would have been earlier that I went in, but I was too young. It right. It would have been well, earlier, well... They, then they, but see, they just started training, mm -hmm. see? So that's why when they shut her down, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't like if we'd been training a while. If we'd been training so long, they mm -hmm. would, then we would, it would have stuck. Right, okay. Uh, now the, 
let's see, I had an actual good question there. Uh, the okay, the V five training was that um, basically classroom work at that point? Yeah, it was uh, classroom and a uh, little physical. Okay. Start yeah. not starting at all, but. It, it, like I said, we didn't hardly get started when they shut it down. Yeah. So, what kind of tests did you have to pass to get in? Well, the pass it was it was a damn tough everything. Uh, well, I studied it all for it, you know, on flying and everything uh, about flying. Mm -hmm. See, and and they asked a lot of questions that uh, they wanted to see off how far you'd went on it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't many that passed it either. Very few passed it. I was like one guy out of 10 yeah. that went in there that got passed. Uh, see, they didn't study as hard as I was studying in high school. Well, I kept my classes up, but mm -hmm. I, I was studying hard for that V5. I had mm -hmm. all the paperwork on it. And I, I studied hard, because that's what I wanted. Okay. And how hard, was there a physical test too? Yeah, oh yeah, you bet. The physical was, oh, they were really, uh, really tough on the physical. Now, had you played sports in high school or done? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yes, I was, uh, boxing uh, was my major. On Any sport? Yeah, I, okay. And I guess the other thing was, uh, which I should have asked you earlier, what was your family doing for a living when you were growing up? Well, when, when I was growing up, uh, uh, my mother died young, you mm -hmm. know. She was she got diabetes. In them days, they didn't know about proteinuria, the 80, and all that mm -hmm. stuff, you know. She had to wear her food and all that kind of stuff. And, and she she died young. Mm -hmm. I mean, she diabetes got her. Yeah. So did you grow up with your father or other relatives or? Uh, not really. I went to I went to stayed with my grandmother mm -hmm. then uh, through high school okay. and all. And then my mother, uh, see, she was in the hospital more than she was home. Mm -hmm. So I stayed with my grandmother. Uh, and then, did you have jobs during high school? Did you work? Oh yeah, I set pins and I set for. Uh, Sometimes three alleys. Okay, so like working a bowling like for alley. The men, yeah. okay. Like for the men's league, mm -hmm. I'd uh, set two lanes with no problem, you know. And uh, then I, I set for, for men's and women's and whatever, you know. Okay. And, All right. So now we'll go back into your training. So about how long do you think you spent in the V5 program before they shut it down? Not very long. We just got started. So just a few weeks or? Yeah, it was okay. just, it, well. A couple months or? Yeah, something like that. Okay. It was, it, it didn't last long. Okay. Because and, they, they, they just like that, they shut her down. They right. must have figured how to work, which way the war wasn't be too expensive training us, uh, I guess. Yeah, and they needed infantrymen at that point, so. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they okay. needed, uh, yeah. Okay, so you said they sent you to Fort McClellan, Alabama then for your infantry training. That's what, no, that's when I went back, I went in the Army. So. Okay. I so, went so, back home. Oh, we went back home after V-5. Sure, okay. because I told them, I says, I, I ain't going over there on no airstrip building and that kind of junk. Okay. So then how did you, did you volunteer for the Army or did they draft you? I, I volunteered, well I volunteered immediately but they mm -hmm. wouldn't take me till I was 18. Okay. So. So you go home. So basically in 44, summer of 44 you start all over again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Started over. Yeah. When, that's when they said, I went down to Fort McClellan in okay. Alabama. Alright. And trained. And, and what do you remember about the training down there? Well, it was tough. I, I mean, boy, we had the hikes, and I, t I took them. I didn't have no problems. So a lot of guys did, mm -hmm. going up the hills and, and uh, training, you know, everything, uh, uh, shooting and all of that. I didn't have no problems with any of that. Then as I went along, they started training me in heavy weapons. Mm -hmm. See, so uh, that's why when I went overseas, the first thing they gave me was a beer. All right. 
running yes. automatic. You know. okay. What other kind of weapons did you train on? <clears throat> oh, uh, just regular rifle, uh, you know. The, but heavy weapons the, would include like thirty caliber machine guns. Did yeah, you train with those? Yeah, okay. and I didn't get in artillery, right. but uh, right. heavy weapon, you know, yeah. like, machine, like guns. machine guns and. Um, did you try mortars? And the bar. Uh, no, I no didn't more. get to mortars, okay. no. Or did they have bazookas? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we had bazookas, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, and what kinds of people were training with you at Fort McClellan? Were they all about your age, or were there older guys there? Uh, there was some older guys, a little older. Yeah, there wasn't, uh, there was, there was uh, not a lot of them. Most of them were young. Okay. Most of them were pretty young. All right. And about how long did you spend in, at Fort McClellan, do you think? Mm, well, we had a short training period. Uh, we weren't there very long. It was a fast training. Yeah, so it might have been eight weeks or something like that, or even six. Yeah, it was a short mm -hmm. training period. And then we went back home, and then they sh shipped us right to New York. And from New York, uh, that's when we went on, uh, I was on a Liberty ship. All right. Now, did the ship sail in a convoy or by? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Big convoy. And what do you remember about that sea voyage? <laughs> what I remember about it, when they when they sunk this, uh, uh, a third of the division, of the, I knew Bob Blatt because I skied with him. Bob Blatt was an officer, and he was uh, upstairs, but mm -hmm. they couldn't get none of the listing men out. It went down so fast. But when it when the torpedo hit him, I thought it was our boat. I mean, it was, they were right next to us, and boy, oh boy, that that's, uh, sounded like it hit our boat. All right. Uh, now, at this point, when you're going over, now, were you assigned to a division yet, or does that come after you get to Europe? Uh, Jeez, I, think, I think I was assigned to the, okay. our outfit was assigned to the Rainbow Division. Okay. So now, as far as I know, yeah, it had to be because uh, we went in through the Mediterranean mm -hmm. to Marseille. Yeah. Because uh, they wanted to keep these big convoys away from the north. There's where they were hammering them so bad with the U-boats. But they got us right off the, uh, they got the 66, he Bob Blatt. It was an officer in the 66. 66 Division? And, and he told me what happened on the ship. They couldn't okay. get none of the men out. They mm -hmm. went down so fast, yeah. they couldn't get none. And no did that men. happen in the Atlantic or in the Mediterranean? Or? In the Atlantic. Okay. Yeah. And that, right on the, uh, the top end of Africa before mm -hmm. we turned in for the Mediterranean. Okay, yeah, that was a place where they would wait with the U-boats yeah. to try to ambush something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they were not as dangerous as they were before the year earlier, but they were still dangerous. Oh, so yeah. they, they got that ship, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, what was the weather like when you were crossing? Oh, it was bad. Holy smokes, I'm telling you. I, to eat was something else. All the guys would slide to this end and then to that end and throw in the, oh God. I, sp I really spent a lot of my time on deck. Mm -hmm. I wasn't supposed to, but I, I got get on deck as much as I could. Cause you didn't get you didn't get sick if you were up on deck. No, I, the thing is, is, with all the throw up and mm -hmm. all of that stuff, it was sickening. Yeah, I, I never got sick because uh, I ate my food. I was seaworthy. It, uh, that didn't bother me. Okay, but so many men that it did, it mm -hmm. made you. Uh, ooh. Yeah. You, know, you hadn't gotten sick otherwise, you'd get sick then. <laughs> so you go up on deck. <laughs> yeah, you bet. All right. Uh, and do you have an idea about how long it took to get from New York to Marseille? Uh, didn't take didn't take so long. Uh, see, uh, well, it, God, I forget how long it took. It, yeah, maybe about it, three weeks or no, two. No, I don't or, think it took that long. Because well, ships weren't too fast. No, they were they were just a, a bathtub. Mm -hmm. Is all they were. They were them Liberty ships were. Built very. That's why that one went down in the '66. Mm -hmm. Went down so fast. One Bob Blatt was on. Right. Okay. I talked to him afterwards about that. What happened? Yeah. 
He says, with a crying shame, he says, try to get the guys out. One to be pulling the next one back. Mm -hmm. They just couldn't get out. They couldn't get them out at all. All right. Now, okay, so you land, and you land in Marseille, France. And do you know roughly when you arrived there? What time no, of year it was? No, I forgot dates and that kind of stuff. Well, I guess you talked about being involved in the Battle of the Bulge, and that started yeah. in December. And how long do you think you had been up near the front before that started? Well, the minute we landed, they moved us right up. To okay. So maybe you landed in December or November or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. Okay, yeah. so late in the year, which would be about right for your, your training schedule and the rest. Yeah, they moved fast yeah. to get us in there. Okay. Now, once they land you at, at Marseille, how do they get you up to the front? Trucks. Okay. Yeah. And do you remember anything about Trucks. driving... Driving all that way? Not really. I, at the time, I didn't know where they'd taken us or what. I just. Uh, well, were the trucks open or were they covered or? Yeah, they're, you know. The, like a tent thing on yeah, top of them. Yeah, okay. it's uh, two and a half tons, I yeah. think. So you're sitting in the back of a, of a truck, basically, and there's yeah. like a canvas cover over. So you can't really see all that much no, as you're going through. No, that's right. Through. Yeah, you yeah. don't see hardly any, anything. You don't, they don't tell you where you're going. Right. <laughs> you didn't. You just had to go along with it, see. Okay. Now, were you... All I remember one thing, well, I shouldn't uh, sure you tell. Should. I remember one thing. We went by a bunch of... Artillery men, most, you know, most of them were black, mm -hmm. and they were making smart remarks and stuff like that. And uh, they were all laying around. That night, as I understand, choom, 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 boy, they hit them hard. And the next day, you couldn't see the bottom of the foxholes. <laughs> <laughs> change a uh, little bit of opinion, you know. Right. Okay. So uh, So that's when you're getting up pretty close to where the actual front is then. Must have been. Yeah, yeah it was. Because yeah, they were being hit by German yeah, artillery. Because yeah. they, were, they were shooting. Yeah, we were getting in there. And uh, let's see, as I remember, well, well, we went mostly on foot after yeah. that. Right. Yeah. We now, were, uh, were you already in a comp your company? when you were driving through France, or did you join the company? That's when we joined them, yeah. Okay, once you got up there. Yeah, I got an F, F company, mm -hmm. 232. Right. So they were all, F company was already there, and you joined them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I went in as a replacement, yeah. Very good. That's why they gave me the BR, and, uh -huh. and uh, that was the beginning of my long hike. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so now, this is like December of, of 44 at this point. So is it, was yeah. it cold outside? Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. General Patton come out. I remember seeing him one time. And he asked his GI uh, if his feet was warm. He stepped out of that house trailer and he had uh, sheepskin boots on. He asked him if his feet was dry. He took and pulled his stockings up. What, what, what stockings? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, I remember kicking my feet on stumps to try to get, uh, you know, walk and keep them warm. Mm -hmm. So there were men Combat getting... boots we had there wasn't, wasn't for that kind of weather. Right. So were men getting frostbite and that kind of thing? Uh, yeah, yeah, but they, they, we managed to stay warm. So when you're out there, would you get to sleep in houses, or would you just be out in the open, or? Uh, we generally bivouacked uh, as we went. We bivouacked in in houses, you know, and yeah, slept on straw. Mm -hmm. You never knew what the hell you were gonna do, and we stopped. We stopped. Okay. So you would have started out in kind of the northeastern part of France at that point. Because that's sort of yeah. where the action was if you're coming up from Marseille. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, when you first joined the 42nd, were you moving around all the time? Were you walking from one place to another, getting trucks, or did no, you stay no, in one place for a while? No, very seldom we went in trucks then. It was, mm -hmm. uh, I'd, they would go on, uh, when we stopped, it was assigned guard duty and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I've had 
be on guard duty and a patrol would come through, you know, eight, ten guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, our orders were not to bother them, you know, start, start anything with mm -hmm. them unless necessary. So a lot of, I've had a march right, in, right down darker now. I'm in the shadows and the patrol would go right by. Six, six guys, eight guys sometimes. And what would they be doing? Just looking to see where you were? Or? Well, they're patrol, yeah, they yeah. just march by. So why wouldn't you stop them? Well, <laughs> they, our orders were not yeah. to, unless, uh, unless it was necessary, to, because the thing is everybody's sleeping and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and here they're heavy armed with with machine pistols and everything there like that, you wouldn't have stood a chance to mm -hmm. open up on them. Right. Which, which just... Uh, but then couldn't they have gotten it into your, into your own positions and made trouble there? I mean, or were they... Well, I wasn't the only one on guard. Yeah. They, they had me stationed and another one stationed, and, you know, and on and on. If they... If they just went through uh, where they figured they would be, leave them alone. Okay. Because uh, it would just uh, this well every way have all the rest of the guys run like run around like chickens with their head cut off, and you wouldn't gain that by mm -hmm. killing a few patrol. Okay. And, now, were there occasions when you were on guard duty that you did fire or you did challenge them? Uh, no, I didn't, didn't, didn't have to challenge them uh, on any occasion that I was on, mm -hmm. and, or none of the other ones on guard either, because, see, they must have just made a swipe, whatever they was trying to find out, mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't important. Okay. okay, so how long after you joined the unit was it before you got into a serious firefight? I mean, did you just have this kind of activity for a long time, or did you get no, in no, more serious no. fighting? No, we moved, just moved through, mm -hmm. and uh, we moved in, and, and in the combat, they blew bridges ahead of us, and we had to wait for assault boats to take us across the river, and uh, at one time our CO, from, uh, he was from St. Paul, he saved our, our butts. Well, I went and dug in on the edge of the river, you know, in order to dig in. Mm -hmm. We uh, dug in there. We was all going to go behind the dikes, figuring flat trajectory couldn't get us. Well, he had us digging on the edge of the river, and that night, choom, 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 and big mortars and three point something mm -hmm. bigger, three times as big as our 88s. Mm -hmm. our, our, uh, so heavy, they were using heavy mortars on you, or artillery too? Or just mortars? Them, just more, on that occasion, just mortars. Yeah, the big ones. Yeah, the big ones. But they level that dike. If we'd mm -hmm. been behind that dike, we wouldn't have been nobody else. Mm -hmm. They'd just level that dike right up. And uh, so anyway, then we next day we they built the br bridge mm -hmm. good enough so we could get over it by foot. You know, and so we went across, went across. There was a lot of, a lot of um, fire, you know. I mean, but we were dug in on the edge of the water, and mm -hmm. all the fire was above us, went over us. They didn't know right where we were, I guess. Mm -hmm. Now, you're as you're advancing and moving forward here in these first couple months when you're up there. Was your unit taking very many casualties, or uh, uh, mostly undercover? Uh, we got casualties, all right. Like uh, our squad leader, he was good at assault machine gun nests, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he, he was real good. And he got it. They finally got him. Burp gunner got him, mm -hmm. you know, on the side. I opened up, but uh, emptied a magazine on it. Mm -hmm. But the thing is. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do him any good when he Yeah. Okay. And yourself, I mean, did you do, did you have to fire the BAR a lot? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I done, uh, used it quite a bit. Yeah. 
but I always that uh, enemy. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. You know, I I never. Uh, <clears throat> it, uh, I uh, seen things I didn't rather not talk about. You know. So, but there there were sometimes friendly fire incidents where people would be hit by. Oh yeah. Grown men. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that happens. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you mentioned, so basically you're now, you're there, you get there late in 44, and the war goes on into 45, and eventually the yeah. Germans will surrender in May. Now, over the course of that time... Um, we were going all the way across Germany. Okay. So you're walking across, and maybe a little bit of Belgium or Luxembourg or whatever at the beginning, but mostly France well, and Germany. Well, through uh, Nuremberg. Yeah, that's in Germany. And, yeah. I mean, we were the first ones in Dachau, you mm -hmm. know, going through Dachau. And uh, that was a mess. Now, when I kind of, what I want to do as best we can is try to sort of follow you pretty much in order as you go forward. Mm -hmm. So you get there, and the bulge has started, and so you're involved along the side of the bulge. You're trying to push the Germans yeah. back there. Yeah. Now, at, when you were doing that, were the Germans standing and fighting, or were they just backing off? They were backing off then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they started backing off. Okay. And but then, uh, they, they'd still, uh, they didn't just run away, mm -hmm. you know, but they, they started to leave the pressure off. Mm -hmm. I never could figure out the only thing they didn't want Russian occupation. How come the last thing they, they threw their crack troops against us? Yeah. Why didn't they push the goddamn Russians back out of there? They, yeah. they didn't do it. Well, that was one of Hitler's choices, and by then his weren't so good. Well, yeah. not, none yeah. of the bit officers. Yeah. You, know, you talked about crossing rivers and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember crossing the Rhine River? that's been bigger than most of the others. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I've, I've forget what. See, I, I was, I didn't, uh, in geography, I wasn't mm -hmm. pretty well informed on anything. Okay. It would just... You just keep just, going. Just keep going there. I, I couldn't remember a lot of the... Some of them were pretty big, you know, that went across. And, and were the bridges usually ones that your engineers had put up? So you have platoon, pontoon bridges or well, bailing bridges? Well, they blew bridges. Mm -hmm. We could hear them uh, when they blew them. Mm -hmm. And of course, you couldn't get across it then. And then they'd move up uh, into what do you call engineers, mm -hmm. um, redo them good enough to get over them right. anyway. Instead, of, only one time they brought assault boats up. They couldn't, they, they wouldn't let uh, engineers near the bridge. Mm -hmm. They kept uh, they kept them from doing anything on the bridge. And did you have to get in the assault boats to get across? Yeah, oh yeah, we went in the assault boats. And were the Germans shooting at you when you did that? Uh, no, no, we didn't. We went across at night. Okay. All right. Yeah, they weren't shooting at us then. Okay. And I guess. I'm trying to get a, get a little bit of a sense of it, sort of you know, how regularly is your unit really in action? I mean, are you getting enemy fire every day or just some of the time? Uh, most of the time, the enemy was retreating ahead of us all the time. And a lot of times, uh, we were behind uh, the TDs, you know. Tank destroyers. Tank destroyers, yeah. destroyers you know, not tanks. Mm -hmm. They're tank destroyers. Right. We'd be behind them when... The, Fire was heavy, mm -hmm. and uh, they generally retrieved. They once we got them on the run, it seemed mm -hmm. like they just kept them on the run. Yeah. And they wanted to keep, They wanted to surrender. Uh, you know, okay. they they had their bellies full. Right. Now you mentioned before we started the actual interview, you had an incident there that you should have gotten the Silver Star for, and that's a case where you did encounter some enemy who did want to fight at least for a while. Can you describe what happened then? Well, yeah, the town, uh, our squad leader's son of Phil, his orders mm -hmm. were from uh, uh, this uh, CP, mm -hmm. uh, move, move ahead and take the town immediately. And son of Phil said, uh, we're way out on point, just take a break before we went all the way across the field. Mm -hmm. 
field was flat at first and then hill up in the town, see. And it, they made it look like the soldiers were moving out. They weren't. And uh, when I discovered these guys carrying the heavy stuff through the woods, that you could see way down the planted trees, uh, you see it down along the line, it said that the center field were carrying something heavy. So we censored them and captured them. We got them <coughs> with, with the equipment. They surrendered right away. They knew they didn't have a chance once. What, so, were, what were they planning to do to you? They were going to set up on each side of the woods with the heavy machine guns. Now, their object was the town was going to drive us back. Mm -hmm. They weren't going to let us in that town. They must have been armored pretty heavy mm -hmm. because after this after this happened, I said, then I seen stuff moving out. Mm -hmm. And then the women and children coming with bed sheets and stuff like that, and, you know, because uh, they, the, not to draw fire. You right. Know. Because it anyway, they moved, then they really moved up, but with that in mind, they were going to drive us back mm -hmm. into that flat. Yeah. And then them two heavies would crossfire mm -hmm. us, and we would, uh, would have been wiped right out. Yeah. So the Germans what chance would we had in the flat field with yeah. crossfire heavies on each side? Yeah. Now, uh, when you captured these Germans, um, yeah. what did they look like? I mean, were they your age or older or younger? Or? Well, younger. One of them was only around 16. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could tell you the instance, but I'd, ra I'd rather not do it. Well, tell it. Well, it's about one of our own men, too. It was a, we had a mean guy from Chicago. I ain't mm -hmm. given no name. That's fine. Uh, we captured the guys, and, and this one kid, you know, they all defunct him. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we searched them, you know, and everything, uh, they, they surrendered. Mm -hmm. uh, the kid had a spoon. We had the, the spoon, mm -hmm. the fork, and the knife yep. all in one unit. Mm -hmm. That's where we kept it, in his mm -hmm. pocket. And there was a bullet hole right in the middle of it. You know what that meant. Mm -hmm. So, and Dale, I was, no, I You're not giving it the last name, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. He, uh, he took a pistol out, he was going to shoot the kid. I says, no, you are not. I said, that's murder. He said, he defunged, he mm -hmm. surrendered. You don't kill him. They're mm -hmm. shooting him in cold blood. Mm -hmm. Well, I talked to him, I talked him out of that. It was special when I told him, now that's murder. Mm -hmm. And he backed off of it, but we, we captured him. We got the guys that were going to do the damage, right. which are two heavies and they had plenty of ammo. And did you ever see any German armor? Any tanks or assault Oh, guns? yeah, okay. sure. And was it fighting, or was it, did you just see the wrecked tanks, or what? Or were uh, they attacking them? Oh, I've seen them, uh, uh, well, uh, <coughs> we moved across, I was going across one, one place, uh, there was uh, some German tanks on the other mm -hmm. side, and they were firing on this one dike to stop us from getting over it. And our, we had three TDs that were going through, and they they uh, used the bazooka, blew the track off for the first one right under the on the bridge, there, mm -hmm. so they couldn't they block it. And uh, but our uh, last TD went over and he climbed. I thought it was going to go backwards. He went right over the top of the dike and opened up. Oh my God! He opened up on them civilians and everything was going. And that was. And the German tanks didn't take him out. No, no, he, they didn't. They were they retreated. Okay. They were on the on the way back at the time. Okay. So by the time the tank destroyer is really going forward, the enemy tanks aren't shooting at it. Yeah, okay. they no, they didn't shoot at them, but they were waiting till they got through there, I guess. Mm -hmm. Then they were going to open up on them, but uh, when they blocked the, the bridge and didn't mm -hmm. let the tanks through, then the, the Germans 
uh, retreated or they moved back anyway. Okay. Just to clarify here, you talked about somebody using a bazooka and knocking a track off a tank. Was that an American bazooka on a German tank or a German bazooka on the tank destroyer? Well, it was. It had to be their bazooka because yeah. it was a. It was a. The TD. Your TD there. got knocked. So your TD is knocked out, so it can't move forward the way they expected it to. Had to get through it, and he blocked it for the rest of them. Mm -hmm. See, he had he had them blocked. All right. So they were stuck, and they couldn't go forward. Right. Right. Until the one went over the dike, but by then the Germans were leaving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because see, this is the kind of thing where you know the. the this kind of odd detail doesn't really show up very much in history books or, or, or places like that, but there's going to be things that you remember seeing, and you probably remember that TD going up over that dike and things like that. That kind of sticks with you, so mm -hmm. we get that in context. That That's good. Okay. Um, sorry. Let's see. What kind of um, sort of officers or sergeants did you have? Did you have good leaders in your unit, or were some of them better than others? Well, I'll tell you that... Uh our CO from St. Uh, Paul he was from, he mm -hmm. was a crackerjack. He was smart. And uh, I think he, uh, he could foresee a lot of stuff that uh, kept us a little safe. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the outfits around us got hammered pretty bad, but he was, uh, even till he was out on point most mm -hmm. of the time, he, uh, he always seemed to keep us weathered in, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, son of you, he was a good kid, I liked mm -hmm. him, but he was, ooh, he was a devil when that come, he wanted to be the first, he wanted to be on point all mm -hmm. the time, he always was, too. Now, was now, that your squad leader who got killed? No, it was machine? assistant squad leader that got killed, mm -hmm. so he was good, He's, he knocked out quite a few machine gun nests. Mm -hmm. But this particular one, he did. He was just ready to flip the hanger nade too, and yep, yeah, somebody got him. They got him. Yeah. All right. Now, as you were advancing into Germany, you talked about the people coming out with the bed sheets and things. How much did you see of the civilians as you were going through? A lot. A lot of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what impression did you have of them, or well, how were they, they were just, They just wanted, you, the way I seen it, they just wanted it over. Mm -hmm. They were really glad to see us, it seemed like, because mm -hmm. they wanted it over with. Okay. And did they have any rules for you in terms of what you were supposed to do or not do with the civilians? I mean, did they tell you to stay away from them? Or? No, no, no. We just, uh, they, uh, man, when we built it and this and that, We'd go in uh, Kirschen's cherries is what mm -hmm. we was eating a lot of, but we'd eat out of the German, you know, the canned goods mm -hmm. from Germany. We'd, half the time, we our food never caught up with mm -hmm. us, so we was eating out of the cellars and that. See, mm -hmm. and when we bivouacked, uh, we we ate, mm -hmm. but it was all German food, you know. Okay. Uh, now, did you see much evidence of, of all the bombing that had been going on against Germany? If you went, say, you went to Nuremberg. Oh yeah, yeah. Nuremberg. Oh God, when uh, well, Dachau. I wanted wanted yeah. to tell you yeah. a little bit about Dachau. When we went, when we hit there, the German, the officers come come and dressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, putting their shirts on, they was inside. Now, I know factually. It was a German Frau's that was bad in that camp. They had this stick and they had these police dogs trained. And they all obey that stick. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew a girl in Dachau, because I was stationed where she was mm -hmm. uh, afterwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sonia was her name. And her father was a, a Yugoslav fought for the guerrillas, mm -hmm. and he had a bunch of boys, I think seven or eight boys, and two of them was in Dachau, and uh, they killed these two boys right in front of her. Mm -hmm. And I hate to tell you how they, what kind of torture they got. Uh, they wanted information, mm -hmm. and, and uh, that, that was, that was a no-no. Mm -hmm. 
But they didn't try to kill her. They just kept her in prison. No, but they wanted her to see what they were, so uh -huh. she could uh, see what. I guess that was a big deal. She told me exactly how they how they killed them. And uh, the one, he took, she took the stick, pointed to the fence. The dog jumped up and pushed him into the fence. He knew them where that mm -hmm. fence is hot. Mm -hmm. I electrocuted him. And the second one, uh, they hung up by his hands. And the dog castrated him. Mm -hmm. Right in front of her. Mm -hmm. And uh, her dad was a hell. He, he, he was a captain in the Yugoslav army, but mm -hmm. that's equivalent to a, God, a, a colonel in yeah. our army. But a captain would be there. But. He was a quite a grill affair. They wanted him bad. Okay, you know? so they hadn't caught the father. They had just caught the sons and the daughter. Yeah, and yeah. The father wasn't captured, mm -hmm. but they see they thought they could get information out of them. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, they were, they tort. They, they didn't get nothing out of them. Okay. Now, describe a little bit when you first got to Dachau. What did you see or what happened? Well, uh, they, the first thing, the wires were cut, mm -hmm. already shut off, you know. Mm -hmm. The first thing they done is got the, and then uh, all the, uh, they went, uh, people and uh, the Prisoners or? Prisoners yeah. or so, they went after them officers and oh, what, they okay. mutilated them. Okay, so, they, so some of the German guards or officers were still there when you got there? And the prisoners went after them, or they had oh, went yeah, after them before the you got there. Well, no, while we were there, mm -hmm. uh, we were there, and I went in. That I went, we went right through. The box cars were all lined, stunk like hell. Mm -hmm. Their bodies piled up twice as high as this room, and they had one room there. I didn't understand what the deal was. They had everybody over fifty to the left, everybody under fifty to the right. And they went into the same room, and they had about a little bit of acid on that. They had that uh, metal floor, you know. And then they'd send them in there barefooted. And the first thing is, they're on their knees, and then on and on. What a way to go. Mm -hmm. Jesus, guys. That was terrible. And the bodies that were piled up there, man. Life, the juice running, and I couldn't eat for three days, stomach anything. Now, what condition were the surviving prisoners in? What did they look like? Dead. Well, the surviving prisoners. I mean, you said there were some who were, I mean, not everybody there was dead. There were people who were still oh, alive. Oh, the there. prisoners. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, Sonia was one yeah. of them. Yeah. She was one of them. Well, what condition was. were they in? Uh, the ones that just got there was pretty good yet, okay. but I seen women, pregnant women, with little bitty mm -hmm. balls like this in their stomach. That's all there was. Jesus Christ! Okay. Now, how, I, I can't see how that kid could live because it wasn't the size of a kid's head, even mm -hmm. that little balls. Yeah. You know how women get yeah, when yeah. they're pregnant. No, these are, this was terrible. They laid there. They were laying, oh God, a lot of them couldn't get up mm -hmm. even. They were that bad of shape. Okay. I suppose then they added them to the piles, you know. But they didn't have time to expose them, mm -hmm. uh, dispose them, because we moved in there pretty fast. Yeah. I guess we got in there a lot quicker than they thought we was going to get there. Because mm -hmm. in some other camps, all the guards were gone by the time yeah. the Americans got there, and the prisoners hadn't gotten them. Yeah, the prisoners got them, but after uh, we, the wires were cut and her stopped, okay. and the prisoners, the and ones you, were, they were able, they were capable, you know, mm -hmm. they, they'd get after them. <clears throat> then, and then going into Nuremberg at night, we went at night, the whole sky was lit. I mean, it just steady, like daylight, mm -hmm. all night. Choom, choom, choom. There wasn't a goddamn roof left on any buildings in Nuremberg. I think it was the B 24s that must have been hammered. Right, I don't think it was a 19 or well, the B 17s. Yeah. 
I think it was in, I think that's what they was. But anyway, we went through churches, every building, there, there wasn't a roof left. Mm -hmm. And they missed one building, and guess what it was? I don't know, the stadium? Champagne factory. Oh, okay. That's not so bad. <laughs> That was the only building we went right through there. Well, we didn't drop any ammunition on account of it, but that sure. was, yeah, but that night before, that just was. Okay. Now, by that time, you're getting pretty far into Germany. Are you yeah. seeing a lot of prisoners now? Are there columns of prisoners going by, or do you not see any, or? Uh, very seldom. The ones that surrendered, we just sent back, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, the, the, they, they, after Nuremberg, there wasn't no, there wasn't no real fight in them. There was, they were pretty, uh, pretty good up to on the other side of Nuremberg. Now, by this time, are you moving in trucks again, or are you still walking? Well, walking. I we only got in a truck. I wouldn't say five miles, mm -hmm. and we're back on foot, and then that. Bar all the way through Germany, I packed that damn gun mm -hmm. to win at Salzburg, Austria, before the war was in. All right. It was in Austria, and mm -hmm. the war ended. Okay. And then when you got to Salzburg, and now the Germans surrender, now what happens? What was did that? You, did you stay in Salzburg for a while, or did they move you on? Uh, the, no, okay, here's what they done. Uh, we, uh, we, we got in Salzburg, okay. They they dispersed us in different places, our outfit. Mm -hmm. And they stationed me way down in Schlitters, Austria, way down. And it just happened to be right where uh, Sonia was, mm -hmm. in Austria. Mm -hmm. And, and her, her brothers and even her father came there at times. Mm -hmm. It went. I never, I never said a darn word about that because uh, they, uh, you know, there was Sonia was a pretty nice girl, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and what was she doing there? Was it just she just happened to, to? How did she wind up there? Did you find out? Well, they uh, they didn't live there, right. but they billeted it there. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I don't know what it was. It was in Austria yeah. even when the war was going. Mm -hmm. See, if they would have known, they could have captured the rest of the boys and him too. Okay. The old man, but they didn't know that. Then uh, we'd go up to the waterfalls all the time. And I'd beat Sonia up there and we'd talk and everything. And there were some SS that wouldn't surrender. This after the war, mm -hmm. no? So I got a hold of uh, uh, Sunnerfield and a few of the guys, and, and I told them about it. So they, I wasn't actually involved, and I just showed them where mm -hmm. where the the SS Frauls was taking food up there. Mm -hmm. So instead of a big battle and killing them dead where they was taking the food to, then they went and pincered them. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they come down for the food, they just had them encircled. They, mm -hmm. Well, they, they didn't, wouldn't surrender, but they couldn't fight. Yeah. You know, they, knew they were done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They didn't have to really kill them, because then they realized they didn't have a chance yeah. when they were surrounded. Mm -hmm. But right. they wouldn't. They didn't want to give up. You know, SS, they were. They didn't want to give up. Okay. And then, what impression did you have of the sort of the Austrian civilians in that area, the people living around in that village? And oh, they were, they were good. Oh God, I used to go out and shoot deer for them. Uh, would mm -hmm. <laughs> take a jeep, would go and mow a bunch of deer down. You see, the you had to be a. a certain class to yeah. shoot deer. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they didn't want to take them. I said, these are ours. We're giving them right to you. Yeah. Right here. They couldn't do a damn thing about it. Mm -hmm. see. We'd only do it because 
to show them that that uh, it wasn't right for the way they had their laws. And Jaeger was a game lord. Yeah. And I told the Jaeger, I mean, Dick, he would go throw half a dozen deer on there and take them, and he knew we were dispersing them to the people. And mm -hmm. There's nothing he could do about it. Right. And I think he was smart enough not to try to do anything about it. So, so the people didn't have a whole lot of food themselves, or no, yeah. no. We we shoot this after the war. We yeah. shoot deer for them. I shot a Hirsch one time and got to meet to them. Yeah, heck, they were people were people were good mm -hmm. after the war. Hell, I got along good with them. Now, how did you communicate with them? Well, I was half German. I, ah, I could, uh, so you spoke some German. A little enough to get by, you know. Okay. I knew the major words, and mm -hmm. yeah, you know. Okay. Now, how long did you stay uh, in Europe then? Well, uh, I can tell you what happened after that. Mm -hmm. I uh, I was um, our outfit. There was a big rest center at. At uh, uh, Babkestein, Austria, mm -hmm. through all them thermal buildings, mm -hmm. the uh, motel and everything. So they made a rest center there for the 42nd and the 66th Division. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I I was I was in charge of it. Okay. They put me in charge of it. To see that the beer got there, and uh, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, everything. So I got along good with the cook. I had a room there. Mm -hmm. Then at night, I had to go to the officers' club, and uh, they uh, had, uh, had was there at the door. So generals would come in mm -hmm. and whatever like that. I'd leave them in and put up, put up, and and uh, General Collins was in charge of it then, mm -hmm. and uh, Truscott was under Collins, mm -hmm. and uh, the, I had the key for the liquor up in the cliffs where they had all the officers' liquor and everything mm -hmm. in there. And uh, I'd go up and bring that down for him, and you know whatever. So I had a pretty good mm -hmm. situation. I had a room there, and I had a room yeah. in the other motel. I uh, mean, Collins and Truscott were fairly famous generals. Did they make any impression on you, or were they just guys? You want to know the impression they made on me? Yeah. Okay, I went there for honor guard, and. Uh, Watch them stand on their head for Ross, Red Cross girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you the facts. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> Here the gentleman said, uh, yeah, the drunker and hell, they'd get up there, stand on their heads for the Red Cross girls. And I, that boy, that, I took the cake, you know. Mm -hmm. But they were good to me, oh, oh. That one general was giving me a hard time down there, mm -hmm. and uh, all I told him, sir, I, my orders are not to let you in. <laughs> oh, have you busted? I, I said <laughs> to, uh, to General Truscott, <laughs> he shut up in a hurry. <laughs> 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 but he knew I was working for for Truscott and, and Collins. Mm -hmm. uh, he was that Truscott was a mean son of a bitch. He was nobody's, but he was a good guy. I mean, I liked him. I liked Collins too. God damn, they treated me like a king. But uh, some of these generals, you know, they because you're just a little guy yeah. here. PFC telling her, mm -hmm. me I can't come in. <laughs> well, I, I guess there was a reason why he had been blocked mm -hmm. from there, see. And I, when I wouldn't open the door up on him, he was going to break her down. And mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to have you busted. I, I says, for General Truscott. Yeah. 
I don't know, if you're a PFC, being busted wouldn't mean that much anyway. They couldn't really take many stripes from you. <laughs> I guess you could be a butt private again. But. Yeah. <laughs> really. okay. How yeah. long do you think you had that job? Was it a few months or a few uh, months? Yeah. I, I, I had a good job there. Mm -hmm. Now wait, then I went skiing. Okay. And, uh, um, I, well, it, that, uh, that winter, mm -hmm. um, Hofkestein had a jump there, mm -hmm. and I was skied as a kid, so I got to fix me up a pair of skis, and I went over and started jumping. And some of the officers uh, seen me, and uh, now I got to tell you what happened here. When I trained myself, you mm -hmm. know, I, I was jumping. I was jumping pretty good over there, and this is a big tournament over there, where the Red Cross girls center mm -hmm. was there toward Vienna. They're having a big tournament there. Why don't you jump for the United States in there? Mm -hmm. I said, well, get me a better pair of skis and, and ski boots. Oh, yeah, I got a good pair of ski boots and a mm -hmm. pair of skis. So here comes the tournament. I went I jumped a little bit. And uh, comes the tournament. And uh, guess what happened? That was the Austrian Nationals. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, yeah. Tony Laufenteller, second best jumper, Joe Brada was world champion mm -hmm. at the time. I beat him out on her own hill. How about that? And holy Christ, uh, then I was on the Army ski team. Mm -hmm. They put me right on there. And they hired Tony Laufenteller to uh, go with me, yeah. train, me as mm -hmm. a, train me and, and uh, keep my equipment up. Mm -hmm. to par and then they sent me to different tournaments like uh, Planets in Yugoslavia, Cortina, Italy, Chamonix, France, mm -hmm. Garmisch, Germany. Uh, and you're still a PFC during all this? Yeah. So oh, you, yeah. You, you're jumping, you're just not getting promoted. Yeah, well they would have, they would have, if I would have stayed over for another year they were going to give me a, mm -hmm. a commission. Yeah. And uh, I seen the way the goddamn Russians was. I I thought something was gonna break open. I wasn't afraid of it, but I thought, why should I be over there mixed up in it? Now, did you see anything of the Russians? Or did you just hear about? Oh them? no, I seen them. I got I got shot at many times from them. How'd that happen? Well, one of my girls from the restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, chick, uh, her mother and father was. Uh, over there, and mm -hmm. her sister went over, across on the Russian mm -hmm. side, and uh, so uh, I said, "Chick, goddamn, they, they, they're gonna get you." So I went over there, and they had uh, they shot the father. A bunch of bull neck mm -hmm. Russians went in there, shot the father. He was in the closet. Mm -hmm. They raped the mother and raped the sister, the whole squad. Mm -hmm. And the girl, uh, chick, when I was under the bed, if they'd have found her, she'd have got mm -hmm. it too. So I said, well, that's the end of that stuff, chick. We're going to get you back, you and your sister. Now, uh, I guess explain. So you're on, so, but she, but you met the her Daniel, on. The Daniel. The Daniel. Okay. But you met her on the, she was on the American side or? No, she was, uh, she was working for me at, in the, at Garmi, uh, um, Badgestein, in right. the rest center. Yeah. The but that's, young one. But that's in Amer the American zone. Yeah. So she was already out. Or did she go back and when she went back? She uh, went back to get, uh, to, oh, you know, see her she mother. Went, she and went father. back to see her family, and when she was there, that's when this happened. That's when okay. they. That's when, on the Russians. All right. They and then did she get back out again to tell you what happened, or did you go there, or did you go there? I guess. See, we. I went. Yeah, I went. I got over to bridge all right. Okay, but did and she? I had, carried this seven point six five. Mm -hmm. I got him off of SS uh, captain. Yeah. Yeah, and I got his binocular, a good set mm -hmm. of binoculars, and that gun. I carried that gun. Uh, we weren't allowed to carry a gun unless we were on guard duty. Right. But, but uh, 
we always did. Mm -hmm. But every day it was either a dead GI or a couple of a bunch of dead Russians mm -hmm. in the street. Every seemed like real regular. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I knew I wouldn't stand a chance against uh, half a dozen of them with machine pistols. They could run around with machine pistols. You wouldn't stand a chance mm -hmm. to get them with one 7.65. But anyway, I uh, I done a little damage on him. I took off like a big bird after I told Chick get over and get back on mm -hmm. the other side as quick as you can. And they're uh, hot on my ass. <laughs> Boy, I swam the Danube. I dove in. I swam under the water as much as I did on top. Choop, 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 yeah. choop. I could hear the goddamn bullets hitting around me. I swear they didn't get me. I okay. swam the Danube. Now, I guess what I was trying to figure out was just in, in this sequence of events, because she, she went over there to see her family. The family gets attacked. She escapes that. Did she come back? Did you did you go looking for her? Or how yeah, did, I went. Yeah, I went to to make her come back. Okay, so. but you knew what address to go to or and where to find. In the meantime, the, the damn Russians mm -hmm. done what I told yeah, you. They yeah. shot him. Right, right, he was dead in the closet. Mm -hmm. And they raped the old lady and the da uh, Sister, older yeah. daughter. Yeah. And Chick was under the goddamn bed. Mm -hmm. Or they'd had her too. They right. didn't know she was there. there. They'd, right. they'd have fixed her up. So, All right, so. Anyway. That's a pretty good adventure. I, if, if, they, if two of them would have got a little bit further ahead, I'd have, I'd have had me a couple of Russians before I swam the river. But. Right. Now this tape is about... Okay. Now, at the point when we paused the story, you talked about how you, you had gotten uh, your friend back across the river and yourself. I think you got her sister out too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sister and I, we went. I, I got a couple of big officers went down with me. Okay. So did you go? And, uh, so I, again, that's you. The story you told so far, you yeah. were going by yourself. Yeah, I went in by myself. Sure. You got out and. The one girl, did she get out when you left? Or did no, you... no. They... So you had to bring the officers and get them both out? Well, I wouldn't have probably needed them, but the mm -hmm. thing is, I just wanted to, if they'd go with me to make sure that right. they were secure, not, right. you know, that they could get out. Okay. Because they were both pretty girls, you mm -hmm. know, and all them Russians were. There. But you got them Animals. over to the American side then, so yeah. they could stay there. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, they came back to the rest center mm -hmm. and it, it went good. And then the best part was, um, uh, I didn't expect to get a job like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't just be in a, but boy, they, they sure treated me right. Mm -hmm. I had charge of the whole goddamn division, two divisions, not two, the division. The rest and mm -hmm. to give them relaxation mm -hmm. when they come there. Yeah. I made sure they all. I'd go up with these big two and a half ton trucks in Germany and get the mm -hmm. get the good beer and <laughs> bring her down and <laughs> and well, I've had a truckloads full, you know. So peacetime was a lot better than the war part. Oh, that was really nice. It, oh, I, I was in my glory on that. Okay, but you decided you didn't want to stay in the army at that point. Well, here, let me tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and the skiing was what changed my uh, mm -hmm. deal. Okay, then when I'd won that tournament and they sent me training to all these different places, I had to jump at Army's Germany to get on the American team. Mm -hmm. See, I was on the Army team mm -hmm. but to get on the American team and for jumping that mm -hmm. year for the Olympic, yeah, yeah. No, international, yeah. it would have been Olympics, the same thing, Yeah, but world championships, yeah. yeah. It was world, each country had yeah. five jumpers. So, okay, so I'm training at Garmisch, and that one night it, uh, it was warm, you know, and it got cold that night and froze hard. And then we got a, a snow, a pretty heavy snow. And uh, they went, he dusted off the in run. So I was practicing, you know, on, on the big hill. And I 
went up there, never dreaming, you know, that she was that age. I started mm -hmm. down that son of a gun, and I knew I had too much speed. I had mm -hmm. no way of breaking it. Once you, I, I done everything in my power to get re air resistance mm -hmm. and all that stuff, you know. So in the end, I, I just gave it a snap to stay in position. Watch the old hill pass I way over jumped the hill. Mm -hmm. I set a wide telemark landing, but my right foot sunk deeper than the left in that hard packed snow. That's like jumping off of a 12 story building, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm already in the flats where I landed. Skis were kindling. I couldn't breathe when they got me to the hospital yet, mm -hmm. see. And when I got the twist from my hip, I still got it, mm -hmm. from my hip down through my knee. Uh, down, you know, just below the knee, I yeah. got that, holy Christ, I, it was, uh, it was terrible. So anyway, uh, then comes the tournament, and I asked, uh, the, <coughs> the officer says, uh, I'll put you, I'll get you on the team. Uh, no, I mm -hmm. said, I got a place in the first four. I says, how would the guy that plays fifth uh, take it when I didn't even jump? Mm -hmm. And I, he says, well, he says, take it or leave it. I says, well, you know what I did? I got Tony, get me a, go down, get me a pair of skis ready and get them all sharp better slacked off nice mm -hmm. for this afternoon and uh, so I come out, out of the hospital and uh, was exercising a little bit. It was bad mm -hmm. but I said I'm gonna jump. You know you said better not. I says okay you know how I got the first jump off. I went in as a substitute jumper for, mm -hmm. for and she didn't stop the tournament. I goes up and I knew I had to make that first one good. And I did, I cranked her off and oh, I went way down her way, set that landing. I didn't know if I was gonna crumble or not, but I stood her. Mm -hmm. Longest standing jump, my form points is up there. I slides in that big, you know, that big deal from the Olympics, I, mm -hmm. I slid into there. I had a hard time. Uh, oh, normally I can stop on a mm -hmm. dime, but I scooted it in there and picked it up my skis and put them up. He said, he spotted me. Mm -hmm. He come down there and put me at attention and held a turn. He gave me bloody hell, boy. He was, he was, oh, God, he got after me. And so why was he getting after you? Because I jumped. Oh, you told him you weren't going to jump, and then you jumped anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, is I only reason I substitute jumper. Mm -hmm. Right. See, and uh, and he knew it was me, and uh, I said, "Sir, could you do me one favor?" I sure appreciate it. He says, "What's that?" I says, "He started shaking his head." I said, "Just let me." Uh, just let me make the next jump. I says, I'll promise not to jump, I'll just ride it. I got enough uh, distance and form mm -hmm. points on the first round, I won't have to get, to, I won't have to get way down there. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah, okay, go, but don't you, don't you snap on the takeoff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I obeyed him too. So, uh, He's walking away there like that. He turned around. Nice jump, Jack. He said. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I, I went up, but I just let give it a little pop, you mm -hmm. know. I didn't just ride it. I just gave it a little. So mm -hmm. I knew I wouldn't go down as far as I did the first time. Said a nice landing and went. Guess what? I come in. Just fourth. Mm -hmm. I just made it. <laughs> Boy, if I would have just rode it, I wouldn't have made it. I, but I got in legally. Mm -hmm. for, uh, I got in just fourth, and the, then I placed seventeenth out of ninety-two jumpers. Mm -hmm. 
on the final, at Zermatt, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. We jumped where the Matterhorn is, yep, you know, yep. that's where the international was held. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course the Scandinavian them days was getting first 15 yep. places, yep. you might as well say. Other countries got better since, but they skied year round, you mm -hmm. know. And, yeah. But anyway, we, uh, I thought, I, I know how much better I could have done, mm -hmm. but I was still, I couldn't get my timing just right on the takeoff. You know, well, right? weren't you still injured too? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah I Cause still, today probably they wouldn't let you go. Yeah, yeah, I was still, oh, it was, boy, and I never did complain about it or nothing. Mm -hmm. If I come back to the States, I got mm -hmm. a job with the conservation. I worked and worked. 93, it, it, oh God, I was commercial fishing and it started giving me a hard time. It got so bad I couldn't even uh, do anything. I went to the, I applied for it, for assistance, you know. Nope, you didn't, because uh, I didn't baby it and ask mm -hmm. for it then and right. everything. They, uh, they denied me, so, so it's, I was denied. Well, got back and got back to work again, but boy, at times it, it still mm -hmm. gives me it gives me trouble. If I would have known it was going to give me trouble the rest of my life, yeah. then I would have uh, got. I, I would have got. So, about how much longer was it after that that you left the army? Uh, was that right near the end then, or? It, uh, well, when I came back. Uh, I came back from Germany, what's that port, uh, there's where we left from when I came back to the States. I was still kicking in the rock. If I wouldn't have got hurt, I'd, mm -hmm. I'd have stayed. Mm -hmm. I would have stayed over. But I thought, God damn, it, it wasn't getting any better. And, and uh, so we came back, I think it was... That, that's the only port Germany's got there. Okay, well, there's Bremerhaven. That, that's it. Yeah. Bremer, that's it, Bremerhaven. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so you leave out of Germany. Because by then, I mean, this is this, you know, you were talking, you weren't quite sure when you left the army. I mean, it, it could have been 47 or 46, late 46, or sometimes 47. Yeah. Because you were there for a while. Yeah, I was there a little. I was there a while. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, now, do you remember anything about the voyage back? Was it a better trip than the one going over? Or? Oh yeah, yes, it was a <laughs> bigger boat and uh, yeah, it was, oh, and that binoculars I took mm -hmm. off that SS captain, mm -hmm. uh, the captain of the boat, he's looking at a name on another boat and I read the name to him. My little binoculars <laughs> from that captain read the name before mm -hmm. he could pick it up with his binoculars. Let's see that, let's see it on once. He looked in there and he says, I'll be, God damn. He, he took his and tried to adjust them. And uh, that, that little boy, that was a real pair, good pair. Well, that officer, he had the best, I suppose. But they were really good mm -hmm. binoculars. <clears throat> and, uh, anyway. Okay. And once you got back to the States then, uh, did you get discharged right away or did you stay in for a while? No, I, I get discharged. I wanted to go in the conservation department. I went I went to Wisconsin mm -hmm. and I uh, right away, uh, they, they gave me a job because of my service. Mm -hmm. I, they, they got me in there right away. I, would, I went with fish management and they stationed me at uh, uh, they stationed me at, uh, oh God, uh, it was uh, in uh, Marinette County, mm -hmm. uh, raising uh, brook trout at, uh, at their hatchery there. Mm -hmm. I was stationed there to start with, I worked on that for a while, and then they put me in warm water fish worked that I love that kind of work mm -hmm. but goddamn politics bothered me so bad and uh, in that, that I didn't know I was then I went forestry a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, then I got out of it well, how'd you wind but up in Michigan I went on my own well 
Uh, I, uh, I'll tell you how I really ended up in Michigan. I had a doctor that's got a, a big uh, resort camp, uh, 200 acres in the Ottawa Forest mm -hmm. above Iron River, select area. And, uh, well, I ran a big logging crew for a while. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then I went commercial fishing for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, this doctor he invited me up there. A friend of mine was getting married. So we had a big party. And, and he was had these kids all hired. Uh, I'd marked a lot of timber for the state and stuff. I knew what the heck mm -hmm. the deal was. And uh, these kids were uh, charging for going out there. And when he got out there, what work they did was half-assed, mm -hmm. nothing decent like that. So Jimmy, the one that got married there, he said, Doc, why don't you have Jack go out there and manage a goddamn mm -hmm. thing? They, they have it done right. He says, well, I don't know if you would. Well, he asked me, and he says, yeah, okay, Doc, I'll mm -hmm. go and get, get it going for you. Shit, that was, I was with him now uh, 26 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I, a good friend of mine, and I got friends uh, that uh, was, uh, I was also going to you'd mentioned before something about you eventually learned to fly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How'd that oh, happen? Well, I, uh, yeah, as soon as, uh, when I had the camps up in, uh, resort up in Canada, mm -hmm. I had a uh, flying camp, and I had three planes. I had, uh, uh, I had um, Beaver, 180, and a Taylor Craft. Mm-hmm. So uh, I didn't fly the beaver, but I, I flew the, the other two. Mm -hmm. And I'd take that one down to Florida with me in the wintertime. I'd fly down there, see. And that's how I got stuck in commercial fishing. I, I just got done that for a while. But anyway, we had the camps up there, the resort and everything, and it's going nice. And my wife had a car accident and got killed there. So that ended the, mm -hmm. the Canadian business. But um, what I'd done in bush flying resorted back to that V-5 training. Mm -hmm. Everything I learned on that could have brought back, uh, well, it favored me a lot in the mm -hmm. flying yard. I would load up a plane with moose and stuff like that. You had to watch your, your lake your weights, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And when you go to get over a ridge or like that, you know, the vortices come down. I learned all that stuff, see. So. Now, uh, aside from some basic avionics, what do you think you got out of your time in, in, in the service? How did that affect you, or what did you learn from it? Well, I was idiotic by not staying in it, because mm -hmm. I could have, I could have went, I could have really went. They offered to commission me if I'd have stayed mm -hmm. over the next winter, yeah. for the next ski, for ski, next year's skiing. Right. And then in the meantime, I had to be in, had to have the rest centers to <laughs> gravy train. Mm -hmm. Boy, I'll tell you, I never had it so good in my life as that. Gee, that was, oh, the cook, he was my buddy because <laughs> I'd bring him down and I'd go from the liquor controller, I'd bring him what he liked, you know, and oh man, he'd send me meals up. I had I had more food up my darn rooms and gee, yeah, that, that was a life, all right. All right. Well it does make for a pretty remarkable story, so I'd just like to close here by thanking you for taking the time to share it today. Well, you're very welcome. I uh I was happy too. Then I ended up on in the internationals, you know, in a place that high uh, shape I was in. If I'd have been in better shape, if I wouldn't have had that crash, mm -hmm. I would have. I know I'd have placed a lot higher. You'd be very famous. But it was